Yinka Kingbade's first solo show sees different media of works of art gracing the wall. From the ones he has turned from waste to wealth, with titles such as Psalm 121, What Do You Think?, all showing silhouettes done with rubber slippers and other found objects, an interesting concept. I've put in down here on paper and canvases uh, some of my experiences while growing up as a child um, with the support of my parents and people, you know, um, and siblings and um, the kind of people I've met along the journey of my life. So in a way they've, you know, affected me positively. I've been able to put all this down on paper and canvases just for people to see and to see their mirror because I believe that um, what I've experienced in life is not only me, you know, that um, people out there too must have experienced such. So I'm bringing this, this, this to them for them to, you know, see themselves in the mirror. This experience came when I was working. Um, it, rem it reminds me of my mother, how she has been able to, you know, um, help me in life as an artist because I discovered that out there, there are so many of my friends that had this experience that their parents never support them while they are growing up as an artist and this is what they really want to do. So for me, um, my own experience is quite different from them. So I try to put this on a canvas to appreciate my mother, you know. And I also have Baba Nijigi, which is also my father. My father really helped me while I was growing up as a child. He introduced me to cardboard, you know, back then when I was using the back of my notebook as a cap you know, to make some cap and to play with. You know, my father said, you know what, I don't have to beat you. There is something called cardboard, I'm going to buy it for you. And you can use this to, you know, do whatever you want to do. He made me a template, which I used to produce a lot of them, you know, with rubber. And um, I started selling them, I started making money, you know. This always gives me joy. And, you know, he later told me, he said, you know what, it's not going to stop here. You're still moving, you know, you have to go to school get your certificate and um, here I am today. For these works, experiment aptly captures it and that is what it has been called because it's still a work in progress. This is just the beginning of my monoprint anyway. So in trying to refresh my brain, so I've gone deep into that to bring out, you know, abstracts, you know, from the inside of me. It's just for my viewers to just enjoy. The proud curator Sandra Obiago is happy to be associated with this upcoming artist and talks about the lessons in Yinka's story which everyone can learn from. Well, it was not just talent. What we were looking for was someone who had a vision, someone who had drive, who was a team player, and who was teachable, who had an open mind and wanted to learn. And all the boxes were ticked off with Yinka. Today we have um, 36 works that are on board, on canvas, and on paper. And they're unique because what he has done over the past two or three years is use the waste from his professional printing um, business, the paper waste, um, some of the rubber stamps, and try to see how he could recycle these materials into something beautiful, a work of art. And we are celebrating a star today, a star who um, has used his profession to create art that really exemplifies who Yinka is, an inquisitive mind, a creative mind, and a, and a person who doesn't throw things away. For the multi-talented artist who has several awards under his belt, he feels it's uphill from here and he can only get better with practice, practice, and more practice. Everything around me inspires me. Um, people I meet inspires me. Um, my family inspires me a lot because it's a big family. And um, if you're looking for love, there's love in my family. And I've tried to, you know, um, put all these also into canvas. Um, the, I have a work here that I titled Okon Moya. Okomoya is just trying to show how, you know, that bond 
you know, how strong that bond is in my own family, which I know it could be existing in other families, you know. And if it's missing, I think that painting is, you know, for them to hang in their house, to always remind them that they need to, you know, um, be close, they need to be close together, you know. So uh, my family inspires me a lot. A man of many worlds, painter, photographer, and graphic designer. Multitasking doesn't come naturally to the male gender, so how is he able to bounce it all without messing it all up? It's not easy to meet targets as a graphic designer. Sometimes your clients will call you and, you know, because you need to attend so many things, um, you don't pick up some calls, you know. But what I'm just trying to say is combining all these things together is serious hard work. I believe my hard work will take me to where I should be in the next 10 years. He is a 2008 graduate of the Yaba College of Technology, specializing in painting. He has also participated in several group exhibitions. He was Christianed Vincent but preferred Chukwemeka, which revealed his identity as an Igbo man. Professor Ike, born in 1931 in Anambra State, Southeast Nigeria, and hails from Orumba North. Yes, it may ring a bell, because that was the bush his lead character talked about in the popular book The Bottled Leopard. As a writer, he is a blend of two worlds, wit laced with satire which can also be seen in Toads for Supper. He studied history, English and religious studies at the University of Ibadan, or your state, and earned a master's degree at Stanford University. He resigned as the registrar of the West African Examinations Council, but that did not stop him from writing about the loopholes in the system in Expo 77. He is a strong believer that an artist's role in the society is to provoke change, to speak, write, act or dance about the things that are wrong, even if it has to cost the latter his life. He took that risk, not to mention many others, when he wrote Sunset at Dawn, a story about the Biafran War, published at a time when a lot of wounds were yet to heal and there was a firm instruction for writers to be silent about it. But now, the living legend is currently in charge of a village that has been an inspiration in a lot of his books holding up the lamp of tradition and indigenous language which he believes is being sacrificed on the altar of civilization. You can enjoy Art House on any of these platforms. And that's how we draw the curtain on this week's edition of the show. Funny how time flies when you're having fun, but let's keep the conversation going online, as always. I'm Melinda Akilami. Keep adding color to the world.